Morning guys, we're out on our uh, morning walk today. It's beautiful, the weather is absolutely stunning and uh, I thought we'd just come out, make the most of it, out for a quick hour and what I want to do this morning is just go through some of the gear that I take when I'm scouting out a new location. take with us well first off I like to try and travel as light as I can all right <laughs> that's easier said than done but we'll go through it now so first off I've done a review on this this is me uh, foul raven stubborn backpack great backpack it's expensive it is it's not cheap at all but uh, it's like you get what you pay for don't you so the beauty of this is that I can use it as a seat as well uh, so it's, it's dead versatile like I say it's not cheap but uh, you know we've got it so that's that right first off pair of binoculars absolute godsend if you're, if you're out spotting wildlife looking you know new locations you do need a pair of these end of anyone uh, you know any photographer worth the salt they will have a decent set of binoculars so these ones they're a Hilkinson uh, 8x42 not too big a magnification 10 can be a you know a little bit you know unsteady it's a bit too strong a magnification I find but uh, you know 42 the uh, size of the objective lens they let loads of light in so they're good in low light uh, you know levels uh, really good performance uh, couple of hundred quid so they're in, they're invaluable rubber coated as well coated lenses right let's have a look in the bag like I said we can use this as a seat dead versatile we can also open it up from the front which is handy we'll have a look in the side pockets first so this like I said if I'm if I'm scouting out a new location uh, this is what I'll bring with me all the time you know over time I've, I've, I've added bits to it and I've taken stuff away but this is kind of the bare minimum that I'll, uh, I'll bring with me so <clears throat> I've got all my batteries in there spare batteries nothing worse than, than a battery going so I've got batteries from my vlogging camera and I've also got batteries from my other camera bit of cleaning stuff in there as well just put a lens cloth in uh, and a blower brush just the basics now see this I always have loads of cordage with me so we've got some twine there we've got some natural hemp garden twine anything really uh, bungee there now what I tend to use these for um, if I found somewhere that I particularly want to set a, a hide up but I don't want to put my permanent hide up what I'll do I'll end up making a, a natural hide and you know the cordage is is ideal for that um, you don't always have to use cordage you can get away with just propping stuff up we'll do a video on that on an, uh, another day but uh, yeah always handy is a bit of a uh, bit of cordage all different types don't take up a lot of room so that's that pocket sorted okay in our front pouch just a decent scrim scarf that's a camouflage one all right if i can uh, if i want i can just chuck it over myself or over the camera or whatever so that's all we've got in there always bring a drink with you all right nothing worse than uh, you know getting dehydrated and da -da 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 -da. <laughs> all right <laughs> Other biscuits may be brought, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut down on them biscuits. I did a 10k on runner yesterday, it felt like I was dragging a, a pallet full of them, so we're only gonna have one, honest. So, refreshments, okay, right, main compartments. What have we got in here? Like I said, we can access this through the front of the bag, which is handy. Now, when I first started scouting places out I never used to bring the big camera and the amount of times where I saw something and I could have got a fantastic shot 
could have got a, you know, a really good picture and I was kicking myself thinking, bloody hell, why haven't I got my big camera with me? So I, I just chuck it in. Um, I have my 150 to 600 on there. Uh, it pretty much, you know, does does for everything that, that that I want, unless I'm doing any close up, you know, macro stuff. But that's me. Uh, that's me go-to setup. Uh, my D500 and the it's a Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary. Love it. Really good lens. So I always chuck that in. I don't bother bringing a tripod with me. I've got my little tripod that the vlogging camera's on, uh, but bean bag bean bags are invaluable really good support uh, this one made it myself that one I had an old cami jacket um, yeah stitched it up um, it cost me nothing really it cost me the uh, the price of the the rice that's inside it when you when you're loading these up I could make it a lot lighter by putting polystyrene balls in it but I don't know it don't seem to I don't find it gives as good a support as as, uh, as rice so it is a it is a bit of a lump but um, you know I can put it on top of here if I wanted to you know I can use me use me bag and get that down there and just you know plonk that on there and then spin that round you know and I've got fantastic support there that is rock solid that brilliant so rather than bring a tripod you know just utilize what you've got so that's the bean bag and I always bring me uh, that's my deer hunter that um, fancy camo stuff that I've got you saw it in the deer film that I did and it packs down there like that it looks bulky but you know when it's crunched up so I've got I've got a pair of pants in there. I've got the um, the jacket, uh, the the like head veil, and also the pair of gloves as well. So like today, weather's fantastic today. I don't want a jacket on. I've just come out in a t-shirt. But if I get on a location, you know, if I find find something that I want to sit down and watch and film, uh, I can just put that on, and it's you know it, it doesn't make you sweat. It's dead lightweight but fantastic for concealment so that's a must and also that mat as well that I, that I talked about okay again it's pretty early morning now um, there's a lot of dew down on the ground if I'm sat down in the undergrowth you know you're gonna get wet aren't you and especially if you're in like here it's quite sandy here so I don't want to be putting my camera down and getting getting sand in you know in the camera and, uh, and all my gear so this mat Thing it is. Got a waterproof backing, you can just fold it in half, plop it down on the ground, and uh, you know, I've got somewhere dry to sit on. And uh, happy days! So, that's the gear that I bring out when, um, when I'm scouting out a new location. It's the bare minimum, it really is the bare minimum. I might have something in here actually. Oh, yeah, memory cards, okay, again. I've done it and I've no doubt some of you will have done it as well where you've gone out with your camera and you've no memory card it's sat in the computer at home when you've been downloading your photos so always bring a few spare memory cards with you all right so like I say that's it that's everything I bring with me um, it might seem a bit much you know not everyone would bring the big camera with them but like I said you know you can miss out on things I mean I've just got some cracking pictures of, uh, of a roe deer as I was coming down through the woods and also a, a hen pheasant so it just goes to show and also one more thing another little hobby of mine that uh, I do now and again is making walking sticks and especially in somewhere like this um, this wooden shoot that I've got we've got some really steep gradients now bringing a just a that's just a natural thumbstick so it's just a, a hazel thumbstick that I found and it's got quite a decent V on it there but as a, as a, a steady for when you're coming down you know if you've got your, you're carrying your big camera you don't want to be going you know A over T do you uh, down one of these steep bankings so you know as a support 
walking stick is invaluable. And also, I've, um, I've used it as a support for the camera, all right, because it's hard and, and holding one of these sometimes, especially if you're in a woodland, shutter speeds are down, so you really do need that support. And if you, if you haven't got time to get your bean bag out, all right, you can, uh, You're out walking about, you've seen something straight away. Because it's a nice size V on the walking stick, I can just rest the camera on there and away we go. Brilliant. And it's giving me that extra support. So if you're out and about, you know, get yourself one of these cut. Um, probably not the best time of year to cut one, alright, because all the sap's rising. Um, leave it till back end, okay. Get yourself a thumb stick and happy days. But another bit of kit that I forgot. You're gonna cut yourself one. Get yourself a Swiss Army knife or or another um, another you know multi-tool. Um, again, I've I've had this for years. I've probably had it. Well, I've scraped, I've scratched on it actually when I got it. I got it in Benidorm in 1997, which um, for me to have not lost this in uh, what's that 23 years is a miracle really um, but uh, yeah it's it's not the biggest one but it's got quite a few useful tools on it you know we've got with knives and um, the, probably the one that I have used the most is the little wood saw so uh, that for cutting walking sticks and if you're making um, if you're making natural hides invaluable again you know just for, for trimming branches down etc etc so what we're going to do now, this, this particular spot where I am, down on the river, it, um, last year I had some belting pictures of uh, kingfishers down here, just down in, the, um, down in this spot, you can see, there we go, um, yeah, now unfortunately when we had all the floods and I had two natural hides set up and it washed them all away. Uh, came down one day after you know after the floods had receded a bit, and it just wiped everything out. And it's kind of altered the course of the river. And I've been down, I've been down a good few times now trying to spot these kingfishers again, and they've moved on. So we're going to have a wander further down the river, down past the there's a weir, and I've seen them down there before, and I have an idea. It's a bit calmer down there. Um, yeah, the um, the flow of the river hasn't changed, so I'm going to have a wander down there, have a sit down, get the binos out, and see if we can uh, see if we can see them, because they've they've definitely moved away from this area. So stick with us. We'll go and have a mooch and uh, see if we can find them kingfishers. down the river and uh, spotted one of the kingfishers and I just shot down past me which they do they're just like a bullet aren't they a little blue flash and uh, spotted it perching on the other side of the river so what we're going to do I'm just going to get uh, get tucked in underneath here I'm going to put that camo jacket on all right just try and disguise ourselves a little bit and uh, we'll just have I'm just have half an hour watching that's the way to do it with these difficult you know I said about putting trail cams down unless you've got a perch that you know they're, they're 100% you know they're using 
trail cams aren't the best thing for kingfishers. I think the best way for kingfishers is really to walk the river and walk it regularly and keep your eyes skinned. You know, don't take your, your eyes off the river because they did lack a flash. Um, it's nice to get on a on a straight piece of river as well. Um, then you can look down the full length of it and with your binoculars just watch out where they're going into and then you know once you've seen them going into a, a part of the banking and using a perch go and get yourself positioned across from that and then just watch where they go and where you know where they're, they're flitting about to and you'll get an idea over over a, you know an amount of time you'll get a good idea of where the favorite fishing perches are and if you're on a if you're on a nice stretch of river and um, you know where there's a bit of slack water and there's fish activity always look out for a bit of fish activity fish topping uh, when the sun's out you'll you know you'll see the small fry coming up to the top well if there's fish activity that's where the kingfisher wants to be so you can well put a perch out for them which uh, you know just find something that's lying about and they'll always investigate a new perch um, you know if you put it in the right spot and then from there you know you could end up setting a hide up on it and you know you can get some cracking shots I mean I've, I've set a couple of perches up over that side of the river a few days ago um, not seen them using them yet but in this position where I'm going to sit now there's a good chance that if any come by I'll, uh, I'll get some footage of them on them two new perches so we'll, uh, we'll get down here get with Matt down get set up and uh, see what we can see Straight away, in two minutes, flash down the river. Got a few pictures of him. Nothing brilliant, but it's a good start. It's obviously, you know, there's a lot of activity around here. So I think we're in for a good, uh, a good do here. Yeah, it should be nice if they started using them new perches. So we'll get back to it. Keep an eye on, uh, on where he's going and hopefully get some pictures.
Hey guys, I've, uh, I've just moved positions. I've been sat back down there for about an hour, and I must have seen I must have seen them flying past about I don't know between eight and ten times. Now I'm just in a little location now, opposite to where I put those two artificial well then perches that I set up. I've seen them land on them once, but I wasn't really in a position to get some decent pictures. So I've just moved down the banking. I'll show you where we are now. So it's obviously a regular perch. So we're going to uh, we're going to just sit here, see what comes along. Fingers crossed. call it a do with that. Uh, I've had a good little session this morning and you've seen what I've carried in my bag so it might give you a few ideas uh, what you want to might take when you when you're going on a, a scouting location you know and uh, checking somewhere new out. So everything I put in my bag today I've used so you know I haven't brought anything unnecessary so you might want to you might want to take that much gear you might not want to but uh, it definitely pays to bring that big camera I think. I mean, I've, I've found the kingfishers this morning and I've got some fantastic still images, which I wouldn't have got if I hadn't brought the big camera. Uh, we've got a bit of footage, a bit of film footage, which is nice, I'll put that on. Um, yeah, so it's been successful, it's been all right. So, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you out there. <laughs>